I mean, in the really early going, the main thing I always remember is how quickly the whole game came together. There are certain things in the Ratchet Clank franchise that are, you know, sacred cows, but a lot of the time, like, we're tuning and polishing every single one. We try to broaden this universe, we try to add more characters, we try to add more backstory, we try to create more relationships. We've never run out of ideas. We still always end each game production with ideas for the next one. Every one of these games is about exploring places that you could never have imagined before going there. Yeah, you can have luminescent jellyfish that power a city, but it has to look and feel different. What's not to like? It's, it's aliens and, and planets and, and a whole galaxy of ideas to pull from. Whether it's a metropolis or some sort of space station, I mean, they're outlandish, they're well-designed, they're beautiful, and they're just really, really fun. I still think back to the early days of developing what the environment style was going to be for the game. And back then, John Fiorito would do a lot of these great sketches that were fun to work with because they gave you just enough information to inspire you, but never so much information that they were taking all the fun away. It's cool to, to leave reality before that monotone light plane and, and go to this fantastic world and, and encounter fantastic creatures. And then on the upside, you get to blow those creatures up. But at a certain point, if you have a weapon that will turn enemies into fire-breathing sheep, as a developer, that's really, really cool. Oh, man! I would have to say the Ration Clank commercials have a special place in a lot of people's hearts. I still remember the day when we all gathered around to see the TV ads that Sony, our publisher, had produced. And you know, it, it was it was awesome because they were actually really funny, and I think we kind of knew immediately that they'd be memorable. We were able to take this idea of this franchise that was completely imaginary and somehow supplant it into the actual world. You know, I think a lot of people still identify those early commercials with the first games, and it was certainly a cool moment to see something like that for the first time and realize that these things were going to be on national TV. Probably my favorite, and, and the one that was banned from television, <laughs> was the one where the kid puts the inflated dummy on top of a lawnmower and the lawnmower trucks across the yard and the mother thinks that it's her son on this lawnmower and she's screaming after him and then a truck just slammed. Oh man. My most favorite Ratchet and Clank game would have to be Cluster Booty. I'm having as much fun right now with the competitive mode in Full Frontal Assault. I mean, Cracking Time was just the kitchen sink. It had everything in it that we could possibly put in it. Uh, not only had we made the transition over to PS3 and we got the graphics to, the, to, to a level that we've never had before, the cinematics department really upped their game in every way. To me, that's, that's probably been our most successful marriage of story and gameplay into one great package. We have all the time in the universe. <laughs> I relate to Quark. I'm not. I'm not proud of that. I'm. I'm. I'm kind of clumsy. I make a lot of dumb decisions. If I could sit down and talk with any character, it would probably be Quark. And I know that may sound like a common answer, but here's actually why. I want Quark to take his gloves off. If I could talk to any Ratchet and Clank character, uh, it would definitely be Angela Cross. There's really only one question anybody wants to know about Angela: Are you a Lombax? Because to see a three-fingered dude who's kind of human, but kind of alien, I just have to know what's going on underneath those gloves. I'm sorry. I thought we were here to talk about my new holo film, My Blaster Runs Hot. I mean, I wouldn't even be able to tell a story without some sort of visual. Do you have any crayons? From the very beginning, and with, with really each game, uh, it's, it's all been about fun. It's all been about pushing ourselves to do what we wanted to do. Every single Ratchet game came together at the end, and it was uh, really an amazing testament to how hard these, uh, these crews work on these projects. At the end of the day, I think we want people to just have fun, and we want people to laugh, and, and just have a good time with their friends and family. So to be a part of a project like that, I don't think there's really anything better. So it's been a blast. Looking forward to 10 more.